I do question one's uh, sexual orientation. I've called publicly for the revision of the laws because I consider them archaic and could be used against innocent people. I mean, to the extent that you, you are a, a political leader in Malaysia, I've gone to the very maximum that I could do. Now, why do then we have these sort of exchanges, which is unfortunate to my mind? I never question the fact that uh, I owe it to so many in this. As I said in the beginning, not only political parties, but also civil society, individuals, activists, who have shown a lot of uh, support and concern for my personal plight and plight all Malaysians. But we, we have to encounter problems, and at every single point, for example, the issue of nepotism suddenly comes up. For 20 years, we suffered. And, and it was not Aziza's uh, choice or volition to lead the party. She was forced under those circumstances. She had never rejoiced the position in the party. And we suffered immensely. Um, not me alone, the entire family, and many other Malaysians. And so was no reason on her own. She lost uh, the you know, chance to enjoy as, as a teenager, but just thrown into this. Uh, and suddenly, when everything is settled, nepotism crop up by some civil society spokesperson. Naturally, I felt it was my duty to defend. She had to contest. She was given the most difficult seat against Sharizat those days. And, and when I agreed, I knew it was going to be difficult and a possibility of her losing, I didn't see. And, but to me, probably it's a good training ground. It is not silver plate. You're not spoon fed. It is a, a, an artist's battle. I mean, it's an example. So in the case of LGBT, I mean, don't expect me to go beyond that, given the, the, the scenario at present. But I think you, many others, I think, uh, Prime Minister Martin, rejected outright. But mine was more nuanced because I understand that it is not your right to question a person's sexual orientation, period. And the laws are unjust. And not only me as a victim, but many others can be victims. But there is a limit what I can say or what I cannot. You want me to succeed in my political career, but at the same time you expect me to do things that would destroy my political career. So I have to then take a position to, do, to be fair to those um, who have their own views what about sexual abuse. What do you mean okay. by fair? Meaning that I, I, I don't cast aspersions. I don't think they should be um, condemned. And of course, not Sultan as one case, which I took a, a very strong position against when, when, when a person, transgender, whatever, is being assaulted or insulted. And I don't think in a society, one should insult purely because of one's sexual orientation. And I think for, as, as in a, in a relatively conservative society, you don't expect, you cannot expect something more than that. Otherwise, I would be in a, a civil society leader, not a national leader. So there are, there are limits. I mean, how oh, you can say this opportunistic? No. You, you should know, you should draw the line you should expect what can be said and done given a particular period. Can you imagine in this country, I took a position, a strong position, to uh, suggest that the uh, laws be amended and call it archaic. And for that, I would go get to trial because the I'm no youth leader that call me, uh, I mean, um, uh, condemn me as being uh, a person who, who supports this and wants it to be uh, accepted as a, as a norm in this country. Your, your wife said, our first Deputy Prime Minister, something to the like of, if you're gay, you might as well stay in the closet. Don't glamorize your lifestyle. And I don't think it's about glamorizing lifestyles. I think. You know, and, and the, the question of, of same-sex marriage has never come, come up in the discourse from the LGBT community. So, do you agree with what your wife said? If you're gay, stay in the closet. 
I went through the text again when we discussed, we went to discuss, uh, we did discuss rarely these days. I'm going to Istanbul tomorrow, which is down in Qatar. Uh, so I said, uh, in prison, I had to see her, now out of prison, I also had to see her. <laughs> now, um, but, but uh, well, given the context, I think she just shares my view. I mean, you don't condemn uh, people's orientation, you're not there to judge. And, and I think this uh, comes about with a traditional uh, Islamic uh, view uh, propagated by many of the traditional Muslim scholars. To them, it's just uh, laws, punishment. And we have come up strongly against caning in Tridhan, against the application of hudud as interpreted by past, and the statement was issued by Aziza, incidentally. And I think given that context, um, she may uh, possibly correct some of these spontaneous uh, comments. But I think generally, she we are uh, certainly more tolerant. And, and, and uh, I think the, the principal position is not to cast aspersions and build this anti uh, sentiment that create this uh, uh, tension in society that people don't feel secure because of this sexual orientation. But there have been so many attacks, you know, trans, trans women being killed, uh, you know, the Kenyan incident in, in Trangana, which, which, which horrified us. It, it was just shocking um, that, that this, this happened. But you mentioned you're going to Istanbul. Which brings me to my next question. <laughs> well, I was going to ask it anyway. Um, so Turkey has been likened to Malaysia as a liberal, moderate Muslim country, but in, in the last few years that has changed uh, dramatically. Your friendship with, with President Erdogan, Prime Minister Erdogan, is um, is seen with, with a lot of